Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cannabis Journal Club. Cannabis Journal Club, where we review and interpret United States cannabis patents and scientific journals with concise overviews of complex scientific literature in an understandable and easy to consume manner to expose the hidden knowledge in the scientific literature. We do not claim any medical utility of these government patents or scientific articles. We advise you to obtain your own copies, which we will put in the description of each video. Dr. Allen, welcome. Can't wait to hear what we have to talk about today. Thank you, Bubble Man. Hi, I'm Dr. David Allen, and this is Budley Green. And Budley Green says, herb is superb. And that's our motto, and we're sticking to it. So, I love um, it. Ja over evil, live it. God over evil. So we're here to tell you about uh, CB1 blockers. And there's uh, several of them. And these are designer drugs that uh, the smart scientists have, have actually manufactured to fit uh, the CB1 receptor. And so you have to understand a little bit about that. I'm going to explain a little bit of pathophysiology, but I'm going to try to limit it. So basically, everybody has receptors on your cell membranes. So people are most familiar with, with insulin receptors. So insulin, a chemical, binds onto the insulin receptor. And the insulin receptor is just a pro piece of protein, and it's folded a certain way. And so I, I like to refer them at, to it, them as chemical antennas because that really refers more to their function than CB1 receptor. So it's really a, a chemical uh, antenna. And what happens is uh, it's a long protein and part, most of it's on the inside of the cell, but it goes through the cell membrane seven times. And then there's a large portion on the outside of the cell. And this, this portion of protein is exposed to the serum and blood products that, that are in your, your body. And what happens is uh, these, it's a, a long chain of uh, amino acids, and each amino acid has a different charge and, and different uh, orientation. And, it, and what happens is when the protein is formed, it folds upon itself where like charges repel and opposite charges attract like a magnet or electrostatic charges. And so you have a, a protein and it's shaped a certain way on the outside of the cell membrane. And there's different charges on the protein and, and the protein is for, uh, shaped a certain way. And what happens is when the chemical floats around, when insulin floats around, it comes close to the antenna and is it magnetically or electrostatically attracted to the antenna and sticks and binds to the antenna and because of these charges. So opposite charges attract. And so when this happens, the, the, uh, the substance, in this case, I'm talking about insulin, it's called a ligand. And the reason they call it a ligand is because it ligates or it ties itself on to this receptor, this protein antenna, uh, chemical antenna. And so uh, scientists know about um, the shape of this chemical antenna, the CB1 receptor, and they, they can predict where stereoscopically where each of these charges are and they can make a drug because they can they can form things on a benzene ring or something they can put different hydroxyls or different things on on each part of the atom and they can design a drug that actually fits like a lock and key to the cb1 receptor because it's magnetically attracted to the cb1 receptor and so uh, cannabinoids, uh, THC, uh, is a partial agonist, and that means it partially stimulates the CB1 receptor. But they've made these other chemicals that are what 
what's called full agonists. And so they fully stimulate the CB1 receptor. And that's what we're going to talk about these, these man-made designer drugs. Uh, and, and as I said, these guys are real smart because they can make these, these chemicals that fit this, this receptor. And so, but they get like starstruck and they're, they're set on a pathway and they don't think about the big picture because they don't know the big picture. Many of them, they just know. So the first idea was, well, if you stimulate CB1 receptors, it causes hunger, it causes people to eat. And therefore, if they made a chemical that would block the CB1 receptor, it might be a good dietary drug, or it might could be used for a bunch of different things for alcohol or tobacco or, or other things. And these guys are the same people that devised uh, Narcan. And Narcan is a drug that blocks opiate receptors. And if somebody's dying of, of opiate overdose, you give them a shot of Narcan and it blocks the opiate receptors and it brings the pe person out of nar narcolepsy and will survive a, a overdose of, of opium or something. And so uh, this is, so the scientists were concentrating on, well, we got to make a drug that will be the perfect diet drug because we're blocking the munchies. But they didn't understand the full weight of what they were doing. They were messing with mother nature, <laughs> which you should never do. And they were, since they didn't understand the function of the endocannabinoid signaling system, which is to maintain what's called homeostasis. And so homeostasis is the concept of everything that you measure in, in a physiology, humans or animals, goes up or down. So your respirations go up or down, the heart rate goes up and down, uh, your sodium in your, your, your blood goes up and down, your water content goes up and down, a bunch of things all, everything you measure goes up and down. And homeostasis is the ability to not let anything go too high or too low because life is in the mid ground between the two extremes of too much or too little salt or water or heart rate or anything else you can think of. And so homeostasis is the mid ground between the two extremes. It's, it's the death avoidance system so this allows you to avoid death and so whenever you try to block the homeostasis system it causes death and yeah. this has been taught to the scientists a couple of times one was with this drug called romanabont or acompli is another name for it and it was supposed to be the uh, diet drug of the century. And they, they actually had some clinical trials in Europe and they were having some major trouble with the clinical trials. And they had to stop the clinical trials after only a, a couple of years because a bunch of bad uh, adverse reactions were happening. And so this Romanabot was kind of the Nazi drug. It did the opposite of everything that cannabis does, that THC does. It, it, THC makes you happy and, and hungry and uh, want to sleep. And uh, this, uh, this Romanabont caused people to be, you know, they couldn't go to sleep, they couldn't eat, and they were actually uh, homicidal and suicidal. Imagine a drug a pharmaceutical drug that caused you to do suicide or homicide. It, it, so they took it off the market almost immediately. They tried to put it on the market in the United States, but they wouldn't let it happen. Yeah. So this Accomplia uh, was caught. So they made 
several other drugs besides Romanovant, and they have funny names. They're all end in B-A-N-T for some reason. I don't know the, the rationale for that. But uh, so this Romanovant caused people to not have pleasure. It caused anhedonia, the, the absence of, of uh, joy, really. And, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the main things is the psychiatric side effects because CB right. CB one receptors are heavily concentrated in the brain and they play obviously a massive role in regulating mood, anxiety, and stress and blocking them. Not can but does disrupt those processes, and that's what happened to Ramana Bont. I guess in twenty two thousand and eight, due to severe psychiatric side effects, including depression, anxiety increased suicidal risk which is suicidal ideation uh and the clinical trial showed up to 20 percent of patients experienced like pretty massive mood disorders as well so when certain times when the um the benefit does not outweigh you know the use of such a the risk of such yeah. a drug the risks yeah the risk versus benefit yeah so yeah. um this CB1 blocker was not a good idea because when you block homeostasis, bad things happen. Now, the second time this happened to scientists was with a drug that uh, that affected the degradation enzyme, mm -hmm. fatty acid amide hydrolase, FA, F -A -A -H, and it was a FA blocker. And so they made this medicine that they could give you and it would block the fatty acid amide hydrolase, which would degrade your, your own endocannabinoids and any exogenous cannabinoids when you smoke it, it, it would degrade the cannabinoids. And so if you blocked this, then your regular endocannabinoids would build up and then you would you know, be hungry and uh, so they they used this fa blocking drug and it ended up causing people to have uh, strokes and hemorrhagic strokes and so they they took that off of off of the market almost immediately too. I don't even know if it went to trials, but uh, so twice when they tried to uh, involve or when they tried to manipulate the endocannabinoid signaling system, it caused major malfunctions because you can't block homeostasis and have a good time. And, and it's not just one single thing. You have your psychiatric side effects. You have the disruption of the endocannabinoid system. You have gastrointestinal and metabolic issues because CB1 receptors are also in the gut and peripheral tissues. And blocking them can cause nausea, diarrhea, or metabolic, metabolic, metabolic dysregulation. So lots of uh, GI side effects in the Ramanabont users. It was over 15% of cases that they, that they found. And animal studies showed CB1 blockade disrupts gut motil motility or energy balance. So there's a lot they, going on. There's also the potential right. for addiction and withdrawal that you mentioned earlier, where patients were reporting anhedonia. That was actually a side effect from stopping taking the drug an inability to feel pleasure. Is there a worse side effect in the world, Dr. Allen? <laughs> Probably not. My goodness. But, but yeah, actually this accomplia, uh, Romanabot causes nausea. So, mm. so blocking the CB1 receptors cause nausea, and this may be related to the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, uh, we we did a literature search. They have never tried Romanabont on CHS uh, because Romanabont itself causes nausea, and so uh, it wouldn't make sense if it, if a drug causes nausea to try it on CHS. So uh, you can when you read through these things, you can tell that they're 
hedging their bets when they talk. They, they use particular verbiage to try to hide any complications. So they they say psychiatric issues, but they don't say it causes you to murder people <laughs> or kill yourself. So we're exposing the hypocrisy of uh, of this science. Um, and uh, these guys are smart, but they, they can't block the endocannabinoid signaling system and, and have a successful drug. Well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, anything else you wanted to uh, point out in regards to this topic before we say goodbye for the day? No. Ja over evil, live it. Thanks so much, Dr. Allen. Always appreciate spending time with you today. If you guys have questions, please throw them into the comment section. We'd love to get some dialogue going. We're going to be putting out a bunch of shorts from this video. We would love it if you could share them on your social media, get more exposure and traction so that more people find this wonderful show of Dr. Allen just uh, explaining that hidden hidden language and hidden science in these documents. So thank you very much. Ja over evil. Live it. Peace Live out it. for now. <laughs>